tracheostomy is a procedure in which an artificial opening is created in the throat to assist with patient's breathing or to create an alternate airway. It is a fairly common procedure in patients with prolonged ICU stay or ventilator support. Indications for tracheostomy. Tracheostomy may be needed when there is 1. Some sort of upper airway obstruction, e.g. cancer of the larynx, laryngeal edema, etc. 2. If patient is unable to remove respiratory secretions, e.g. coma, respiratory muscles paralysis. In such cases, tracheostomy allows suctioning of the secretions and the cuff of the tracheostomy reduces further aspiration of secretions. 3. If the patient has respiratory insufficiency, e.g. chronic lung diseases, then tracheostomy might help oxygen ventilation by reducing respiratory dead space. 4. Prophylactic measures. In a patient on prolonged mechanical ventilation via endotracheal tube, there is a risk for tracheal stenosis. So in such patients, tracheostomy is done. 5. As part of another procedure, sometimes tracheostomy is done to gain access to airway for general anesthesia or as a precautionary measure in some patients who undergo an extensive neck surgery. Type of tracheostomy. There are various types of tracheostomy procedures, depending on the circumstances of the patient and the treatment intent. Similarly, there are various types of tracheostomy tubes, each with specific functions. The common types of tracheostomy procedures are 1. Emergency tracheostomy 2. Elective tracheostomy 3. Permanent tracheostomy 4. Percutaneous tracheostomy 5. Mini tracheostomy also known as cricothyroidotomy. Tracheostomy can also be classified as high, mid or low, depending on the level at which it is inserted into the trachea. Different varieties of tracheostomy tubes include cuffed, non-cuffed, double lumen tubes, tubes with speaking valves, metallic tubes and so on. Procedure. The procedure is preferably done under general anesthesia, but emergency cases may necessitate local anesthesia only. There are variations on the technique of the procedure, but generally, these are the steps. The patient is put in a supine position, with neck extended. Skin incision, which may be transverse or longitudinal, is given on the neck. Subcutaneous fat and platysma are cut. Strap muscles of the neck are retracted or dissected away. If thyroid gland is encountered, then it is displaced upwards or may be cut. Any blood vessels encountered along the way are ligated. Incision is given on the trachea. A hole is made and the tracheostomy tube is inserted, preferably through the second or third tracheal ring. The skin incision is closed and the tracheostomy tube is secured to the skin via stitches or simply tied around the neck. Care. After tracheostomy is done, Certain precautions and care is required to ensure proper functioning of the tracheostomy tube and to prevent complications. The tracheostomy forces the air to bypass the nasal and oral passages. Hence, the air entering the tracheostomy is not adequately humidified. This dry air leads to increased tracheal irritation and secretion production. Because these secretions may lead to crusting and blockage of the tracheostomy tube, the first point regarding care is adequate suctioning of the secretions through the tracheostomy tube. Secondly, humidification of air. This can be done with humidified air attached to the tube, placing a humidifier or steam near the patient's bed, or applying a wet porous gauze onto the tracheostomy tube, although the latter is considered a crude measure. Thirdly, keep the patient under regular supervision and ensure that the tube is functioning and not dislodged. Since the tracheostomy forces the air to bypass the vocal cords, patients would not be able to speak effectively. In such cases, a notepad and bell should be provided to the patient to allow them to communicate effectively with their healthcare providers. Fourthly, if the patient has a cuffed tracheostomy in place, then the cuff should be deflated periodically to relieve pressure on the trachea. However, this may not be feasible in patients with increased risk of aspiration. In case the tracheostomy tube is damaged, infected, occluded or non-functioning in any way, then a new tube should be inserted in place of the old one under expert supervision. Complications Just like any invasive procedure, tracheostomy also has some potential complications. 
surrounding structures may be damaged while performing the procedure. Therefore, there could be bleeding around the tracheostomy site. Tracheostomy tube may get blocked by secretions or clots, or it may get dislodged. The dry air directly entering the trachea might cause tracheitis or crusting. The patient may have initial difficulty getting used to breathing via tracheostomy, along with apnea. There may be infections of the surgical wound, trachea or lungs. Decannulation if the patient improves and the healthcare team determines that tracheostomy is no longer necessary, then a trial of decannulation should be attempted. Decannulation is basically the removal of the tracheostomy tube and shifting the patient back to normal breathing. The tube is occluded for 24 hours, and if the patient is able to tolerate it and breathe normally, then the tube is removed and the wound closed. If patient is unable to tolerate the tube occlusion, then progressively smaller tracheostomy tube are inserted and occluded until patient is able to resume normal breathing.